Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Higarashi When They Cry. It's your boy Karako Gaming, and you know how we do things around here. We're gonna dive into chapter 8 of Arc 3. Uh. I don't like this chapter, bro. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with it. I don't fuck with it. I don't fuck with it. Poor Satoko. The die of fate had been cast. Reporting to a public agency, which we had kept being warned could instead result in something far worse for Satoko if we didn't have the evidence first. Look, bro, we're like two or three sentences in, like, what's... Dog. And just, just like that. Had I failed? Had I let my emotions get the better of me in that moment? If you have to ask. Maybe I should have stayed silent and left everything to me on, since she had been relatively calm. I remember the punishment game where we had to badmouth Curry and how me saying anything would have made it worse, and Satako told us to leave the talking to her. Maybe it was the same thing here. I was impulsive, so maybe I should have just shut the fuck up and looked at the floor. But it was too late to lament it. The die I had thrown wouldn't be coming back into my hands. All we could do was pray for something good to happen. All we could do was to wait and see what would happen. And then some. Oh, now you triggered him. There you go. どこかの廃屋にでも隠れてる。そうならなかったってことだろ。もう考えるのは予想。ケイチ君、少し根を詰めすぎだよ。そんな調子じゃ、ケイチ君まで倒れちゃう。Just leave me the fuck alone. I left her with those words and stared lazily up at the ceiling. I wondered if I had really got Chie Sensei to understand. Would the public agency intervene and solve everything within the day? Would they acknowledge the abuse and guarantee her safety? After lunch break, our afternoon classes were mostly self-study. The teacher came back to the classroom occasionally, but then the phone in the lounge would ring and she would have a long conversation with the caller. Everyone in class got the feeling they knew what those phone calls were about. Sensei came trotting back from the classroom. Was it from the classroom or was it from the teacher's lounge, bitch? It looked to me like Sensei had been wearing a dark expression ever since lunch break. It wasn't a very relieving expression. It wouldn't be. Even if Sensei 100% understood the situation and passionately explained it to the other person, at the end, the Child Consultation Center as a public agency would be the ones to decide whether to get her to safety. Sensei understood that as well as us, and that's why she looked so unreliable right now. Kei-chan, go <laughs> Rena was right. It was no fun for us if someone was missing. If the teacher's expression had shown more promise, then maybe we could have gone home more comfortably. It's curious to me that no one's asking how Rika-chan is doing in all of this, because now she's 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 a she's a sole child in charge of a house like there's no one to help her out with the household chores with the cooking and whatnot like fam she must be super lonely but i couldn't let myself feel relieved i couldn't be naive and tell myself all i can do is pray now that the dice have been cast just in case they didn't get her to safety and decided to wait and see again i would need to take further measures We've asked the people who could do something official already. Then there was one more place that was worth asking for help. She might laugh it off. Or I might be right and I could be endangering my own life. But 
I would try. Ah, Mio, Kyosa, Omae no Uchi ni yotte mo ika. Omae, manga kanari motte ru daro. Sukoshi matome gari shita in dakedo na. Eh? Ikedo. There was an ominous meaning behind my words, so Mion realized what I really meant right away. I wanted to talk about something alone. That's what I meant. Rena already had her shoes on, was waving to us from the schoolyard. Mion's house was huge in every way imaginable. The house itself was a vaguely old-fashioned traditional Japanese house, but the yard, I guess, or their plot of land was enormous. It easily convinced me that they were major landowners with Hinamizawa under their thumb. Mion brought me through the guest room and a servant brought us some tea. The servant left, telling us it was 5 o'clock, then withdrew with soft footsteps. If you had the money to hire all these people, then just take Satoko in. I glared at her as I thought that, and Mion seemed to catch on immediately. It kind of looked like I was bullying her. Mion had been apologizing to me a lot lately. Was Mion the sort of person who would do that this much? Maybe it's just that I've been looking so grim lately. ミオに at first, Mion looked like she had no idea what I was saying, but at hearing the whole sentence and putting it together, she reacted. I definitely couldn't tell her who told me. Takona-san, you told me not to, but please forgive me. This was why I asked you about it after all. あたしについて Mion seemed to know what kind of thing I would be talking about. She warned me that doing so would be fruitless. That much was obvious. If what I was going to say was true, then the Sonozaki family would be the masterminds behind the string of freak deaths that had been occurring every year in Hinamizawa. Mion nodded a little. Mion spoke as if it didn't relate to her. That was fine. She didn't have to admit it. 
For now, I just wanted her to stay quiet and listen to me. I thought that I was going to be a little bit of 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 a little bit She didn't nod. She just smiled faintly and listened to me. もしも今年のたたりがサトコのおじじゃなかったなら、だって去年はサトコのおばだろ。順番から言えば決しておかしくはないだろ。そうだね。そういう順序もあるね。第一あいつ、去年のたたりでおばが死んだ後。サトコを放り出して丸一年町に逃げ出してたじゃないかそんなやつモロにお社様のたたり確定じゃないかよ今年のたたりに選んでも不足はないはずだぜそうだね今年のたたりであいつが死んでも多分みんな納得するねお俺聞いたんだお社様のたたりってのはその No matter how I looked at it I wasn't sure whether I should continue No matter how I tried, the words just wouldn't come out. Hinamizawa 連続開始事件。通称、おやしろ様のたたりは、その崎家が主導で御三家が起こしている、村ぐるみの事件だ。べ、別に俺は、それにミオンが関わってるとか、そんなのには興味がないんだ。ただ、もしも、そういうたたりを決めている連中に渡りがつくなら、サトコのおじをたたりに選ぶように言ったろうケイちゃんの言ってる内容はさっきから本当にひどいこと For real ひなみざわ連続開始事件がそのざき家主導の事件なんだとしたらそれじゃあ主犯格はあたしってことだよねあたしがたたりを決め指示をし何人もあやめて消したことになるケイちゃんはあたしを人殺し呼ばわりするんだ。やっ。だから。言ってるじゃないか。ミオンが連続殺人の主犯だろうと、無関係だろうと。たとえミオンが殺人犯だって。俺の親友であることには。それでも全然構わないんだ。警察に追われたら助けてやる。ああ。お前のアリバイを作ってやるし。逃走だって助けてやる。仲間で親友だからだ。そうだろう。ノップ。ミオン。Looked surprised for a while. She was dumbfounded. I can't kill Hans again. Kate, can't I die? Tanda, you're sorry. You can't have a little bit of 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 a They slid down my chin and fell, trip drop, to the tatami mat. I said the story, Kei chan was a big mistake. Oyashiro sama no tatari wa Oyashiro sama no tatari. Tato e ningen no oko shita jiken de atta ni se yo, sore wa sono zaki ke to wa, mashti ya atashi to wa nan no ka. Ah, sore wa wakatte iru sa. Dakara Kei chan no hissi no uttai ni wa mune o uttare ru ke do, sore da ke. 私が叶えてあげたくてもそれもわかるねあ,あでもケイちゃんの気持ちは痛いくらいにわかったよもしも本当に私がケイちゃんの言うように御三家を操って毎年の犠牲者を選べる立場にきっと私はケイちゃんの願いを叶えているよミオでも現実は違う私はただのその崎ミオン確かにその崎家はいろいろな意味で悪い噂を持って連続開始事件とは何の関係もないダム闘争では確かに少々過激な抵抗もしたけれど人殺しなんて大それたこと絶対にやらないようーんダウトそんな悲しいこと言うなよせめて今だ嘘でもいいからうなずいてくれればいいじゃないかケイちゃん夢を見るのは勝手私がここでうなずいてみせれば
ケイちゃんはサトコがあさっての夜に解放でも無情にもサトコのおじはあさっての夜も超える来週になっても再来週になっても居続けるそれを覚悟してね私は渡流しの次の日になぜ殺さなかったなんてケイちゃんに詰め寄られたくない Which, to be fair, is、exactly、how he would react. いいよ Mion stood up slowly and closed the sliding door to keep out the wind that had grown chilly. Mion san ka na? Kei chan ni sonna hana shi o fuki kon da no wa. Na. Ano hito, Hinamizawa o ii kanji ni go kai shite ru kara na. Ma, hon nin ga hitori de tano shin de ru gun ni wa ii in da kedo. Kei chan o kan ka suru no wa. Ita da ke nai na. Yare, yare. Kore da kara yo samo no wa. This is why she's the prime contender to die. Takano sama, kanken nai kara na. Hai, hai. Demo ansin shite. Kari ni Mio san ga Kei chan ni shabetta to wakatta te. Betsu ni dou ni mo nara nai da kara. Betsu ni Mio san ga kotoshi no tatari ni erabarer wake ja nai. Somo somo, kotoshi mo tatari ga aru ka dou ka nan te wakara nai yo. Anna no, fuko na guzen ga tada tsumi kasa natta dake nan da kara sa. Kiete kurete. もしもミオンが連続事件と何の関係もなかったなら謝っておくなそうだね謝っておいてくれるかな<笑>ミオン said she didn't have much time but she still brought me to the gate she said she had a meeting or something today about Sunday's w a t a n o g a s h i Festival, so there would be a lot of people from the town council and the festival committee coming in. Despite her being so busy, she still listened to what I had to say. Ten ni kami sama ga iru nara sa, kito, kei chan no tsuyoi omoi wa tsutawaru kara. Ah, kyo wa hen na hana shi o shite, honto ni gomen na. Make that this week. Kyo no hana shi wa, nakata koto ni shite kure te i. Hm, wasure te oku ya. じゃあ明日なバイバイ I had really only spent a short time with Mion talking to her made me think it was clear that what Takana-san had told me at least wasn't a complete fabrication if Mion was really really unconnected to the incidents then she probably wouldn't have listened to me so quietly she heard me out until I was done without making any quips and I wanted to think that was proof I did kind of feel like I was grasping at straws. Of course, thinking back on it, it was a terrible thing to discuss. I mean, I went to my friend's house, called her a serial murderer, and then told her to kill Satoko's uncle. I was the only one talking that whole time. Mion quietly listened to everything I had to say, like a pastor listening to a confession. She could have gotten angry partway through, told me off, and to go wash my face in miso soup and come back later. But she did not. Was that proof that Mion's family, the Sonozaki, were the masterminds? Or was she just listening because she felt sorry for me going kinda crazy? I didn't know which it was, but it was the one effort I could make at the moment. It was another form of insurance. Should the worst come to worst and the public agency decided to wait and see? It was a completely useless resistance, literally grasping at straws. Sensei said that if she reported it to the child consultation center, they would have to respond on the same day. Could they already be in the middle of responding to it now? If Satoko came to school tomorrow morning all energetic, then everything would be just a needless fear. Why couldn't tomorrow come faster? That night was unusually hot and humid. I, I couldn't get to sleep. I said all that to Sensei. They couldn't possibly decide to wait and see again this year. Satoko, what was it like for her tonight? Had she tasted the end of her nightmare, enjoying a night of liberation? I actually put my hands together and prayed into my futon. おはようケイ
つくんおはようよかった今日もお寝坊かと思ったよ昨日はおばさまには先に行ったって言われるし途中で日射病で倒れちゃったのかなって心配へいへい昨日は心配かけて申し訳ございませんでしたへいグッドモーニング Fuck you say to me? みーちゃんおはよう大丈夫なんかすっごく眠そうだよそういえば昨日は遅くまで町会の人が集まっての打ち合わせ会だったんだろ打ち合わせ会なんて名ばかりの宴会だよ毎年やってるお祭りだもん今更さら小難しい打ち合わせなんかないし今日の午後はやっぱりお祭りのお手伝いに行くのかなうんバッチャの代わりにいろいろ挨拶しなきゃなんないしそれにね祭りってのは準備からもう始まってるからね Our morning conversation was lighthearted as usual. It looked like Mion had thankfully forgotten about how I had barged into her house yesterday with all that crazy talk. The more I think back on it, I felt like I had really said something terrible to her. I really was thoughtless, and it wouldn't have been weird if she had yelled at me. It was highly possible Takano san had exaggerated her story. To think that our comrade and friend, Mion, the young leader of the Sonozakis, one of the three families effectively controlling Hinamizawa, was pulling the strings behind the serial death incidents. It was a little bit unbelievable. But if there even was a 1% chance that it was true, then what I said yesterday to Mion might have been a success. Yes, it was no more than one in a hundred. But that little bit of effort might have brought the chances of saving Satoko up by even a tiny bit. At least, I had made that effort. After yesterday ended, I was sure I had done everything I possibly could. If there was something else I could do, it was probably just to clap my hands and pray that Satoko's uncle would be killed by the curse. Satoko, today is good to be here. That's right. The teacher has been able to help you a lot, right? Yes, I'm fine. ひなみざわ地区の民生委員が私のおばさんなんだけどさゆうべ電話して聞いてみたよへえみーちゃんのおばさんって民生委員さんなんだねそれでさとこちゃんのこと何て言ってたのうん先生があのあと直接沖ノ宮の生活相談所に電話してね担当の職員さんがゆうべのうちに訪問したらしいよ私のおばさんにも今後定期的にアプローチするようにと連絡小難しい話はいいよそれより佐都子はどうなったんだよ保護されたのかうーんおばさんはそこまでは知らされてなかったみたい本来はこういうのって秘密だからねおばさんが私に話してくれたのも十分に倫理違反なんだしさくそかえって不安になったぞ行こう学校に。Right. Discussing this more would just make us feel worse. It was far quicker to go to school and see if Satoko was safe or not. The three of us nodded and ran off. Was Satoko safe? What measures had the child consultation center taken? I didn't care what, as long as we could go back to our peaceful life with Satoko today, it did not matter to me. At the shoe racks at the entrance, Rena took a peek in Satoko's shoe cubby. We trotted towards the classroom. No traps. The classroom was lively as it usually was in the morning. All of our friends crowded around Satoko excitedly. あのさ、サトコ。家で、その、どういう。呼んだのはどなたですの。まったく、どんな騒ぎでしたのよ。先生だよ。あれだけ欠席すれば心配もする。
Satoko said, I told you I'm fine under her breath. She was still trying to overcome all the suffering on her own. みんな里子ちゃんのこと心配してたんだよ。迷惑だなんて言わないで。ああ、もうとにかくそれでどうなったんだよ。どうもこうもしませんわ。あはは。風が治ったから学校に来ただけのことですのよ。これからはあんまり
自分で生活相談所に電話した自称と作りっぱなし里子は嫌いなお父さんを追い払うため嘘の電話をしたのです。Damn. Child welfare officers rushed there and heard the story. Her father genuinely apologized for a few times when he had gone too far and agreed to let the child welfare center give him coaching. I don't know if I'm going to be a little bit of a child. I'm going to be a little bit of a child. I'm going to be a little bit of a child. I'm going to be a little bit of a child. I'm going to be a little bit of a child. I'm going to be a little bit of a child. There were a few times where she had lived with de facto husbands, though those relationships didn't result in remarriage. From a young age, Satoko had been forced to call at least two or three people her father. At some point, Satoko's pranks escalated. She would spill food on purpose, turn over her plate, and even throw it. She would break the windows in the neighborhood and shoplift candy. She would put thumbtacks everywhere and set other traps to seriously hurt people. Not in the way she did now, just to get laughs. She was also fond of telling lies that would be found out right away, and people got mad at her every time. But she never, ever changed her behavior. Satoko chan no koto o mondai ji nante o moa nai de ne. Kore wa osanai Satoko chan ga ha ha oya o shiranai otoko ni torare mai to ste totta. Jie teki na koi na no. In regards to Satoko's problematic behavior, child psychology experts from public institutions indicated her actions were to draw her mother's attention to herself. They acknowledged that she had a form of harmful emotional trauma and declared that she needed counseling and therapy from professionals. They didn't know whether that therapy had healed wounds in her heart. Satoko chan wa waza to karada ni kiz o tsukuri, otou san ni gyaktai o uke te iru to ne. Demo, kekyuku. サトコをいじめてたわけだろそのギフはいいえ虐待の話は全部サトコちゃんの作り話だった義理のお父さんはもちろん少し感情的な叱り方をしてしまったかもしれないけど逸脱しているほどではなかったのサトコ had lied to chase away her stepfather and they saw through her right away and found out that サトコ had issues あひょっとしてそのせいで一昨年の冬は様子見に。はい、ちゃんと昔の記録が残ってましたですから、サトコの嘘の可能性もあるから慎重に。ということになりましたのです。なんだよそれ、つまりなんだよ、サトコは嘘をつくかもしれないから慎
サトコはまだ頑張っていますもう少し見守ってあげましょうです相談所の人が今後も定期的に訪問すると言ってるのです大変なことになったらすぐに助けてくれますよ大変なことになった後だろ Any more than that would have sounded like I was picking a fight, so I firmly swallowed my next words and went back to the classroom. Mion and Rena were talking to Satoko like they always did. It was a silly conversation, a humorous, even fun one, like it was any old day. If, if Satoko really said she could still endure it, then maybe I should do as Rika chan said and watch over her. Maybe whatever help I offer will just go on water. Satoko brought her own desk over as well, grinning broadly. Even knowing nothing had been resolved, this exchange was pleasant and made me remember how fun it used to be. Rika chan's such a good girl. Having such a good friend must be reassuring. <laughs> I take it back. Hmm. Well, she is Rika chan after all. ベナにお嫁は NGワードだね。囲碁控えるように。ほんのちょっぴり反省しましたよ。ところでミオの弁当は何だよ。今日のはまたお目向きが違って期待大だな。おじさんはまったりと夕べのおかず詰め合わせね。煮物がいい感じなんだよ。ほら、大根の色はかなりいいでしょ。わあ、美味しそうなのです。煮物は一晩寝かせ
Satoko was scratching at her head, as though a pimple or something had appeared on it and became itchy. It was so sudden and so unprovoked that I didn't understand what happened. Do do Satoko? At some point, her body had been covered in a thin layer of sweat and her breathing had turned ragged. When I pet her head, did she not like it? Was that what it meant? Don't you fucking go there, game. Don't you fucking go there. Once again, slowly, I held out the palm of my hand and brought it close to Satoko's head. The instant the palm of my hand touched her head, there was a shock like static electricity and Satoko began to howl. She grabbed my arm in both hands and as if flinging off a snake trying to cling to her, as if trying to throw away something dirty, she threw it violently. You tell him it is sentence structure right here is... Dog. It happened too suddenly for me to react. I hit the desk behind me and both it and I fell to the floor. The classroom fell deathly silent. As Satoko bellowed, it sounded like she was in the throes of death and she unsteadily backed away. <laughs> then, she threw up the food she had just eaten. She vomited it all back up. Splish splat. The sound of Satoko's vomit hitting the floor rang through the classroom. Satoko. <laughs> I reached out a hand and she swatted away with all her might, with such extreme strength that I fell onto the floor again. Satoko put both hands on her head as though protecting it, groaned some more and took a few steps back. And then, she began swinging both hands around. Students in nearby seats were forced to evacuate. She grabbed anything within reach, bento boxes, chairs, threw them, tossed them and flung them about. She screamed out as if Mion's word had caused her physical pain. No one spoke a word to her. All the students were withdrawing behind us, leaving Satoko alone in the corner of the classroom. Around her, there were desks and chairs all over the floor. Bento lay scattered. It was terrible. All I could hear was Satoko's ragged breaths and the voices of the cicadas. <laughs> the strings of tension loosened around Satoko. And maybe she suddenly grew scared of her own actions because she started trembling and gave a word of apology. But nobody knew just who that apology was directed towards. So for now, I decided to answer as everyone's representative. <laughs> Our words didn't match each other at all. Satoko hugged her shoulders and back, back she went. Bang. She ran into the locker with the cleaning supplies in it. Even that made her give a little yelp. The impact caused the bucket to tap the locker to fall, making a loud sound, and that scared Satoko most of all. She almost jumped out of her skin, grabbing a bunch of the carton in her hands. Nobody spoke to her. They could only look, not even remembering to blink. Satoko. What? What on earth? I stood up, took a step away from everyone, and approached Satoko. Satoko. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 y
です嫌です<笑> Every time I took a step forward, she grasped the curtains more tightly and cried out Sato, I'm here. Keiichi, I don't know. I'm not going to be a kid. Suddenly, my shoulders were grabbed and I was dragged backward. It was Rena. After pulling me back, she ran towards Satoko in my place. As she gripped the curtains and kept calling for Nini, she continued to wail about being forgiving for something and to be saved from something. What... what is this? <coughs> Beyond gnashed her teeth and groaned, and there were tears falling from her firmly closed eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Crash. There was a crazy sound. Rena had taken the cleaning supply locker and kicked it down to the ground. Everyone stood surprised at Rena's unexpected act of brutality. After that, Rena embraced the bawling Satoko from behind and started crying with her, stifled. Rena, what happened? Sorry, Keiichi. Just wait a minute. What happened now? What happened? Satoko heard something. What did he hear? Rena's raw, hostile emotion hit me like a brick. It was no more than a momentary howl of emotion for Rena, but it was more than that for me. She had shown me what was behind all that emotion, or what was in her heart. Satoko-chan. <laughs> Forgive us for being unable to do anything. Rana's words made me feel as though the blood vessels in the back of my head were suddenly all turning to ash. My vision grew distant, blurred with grey, and the world lost its color. I thought, I thought we could save Satako, but though I knew it would be sooner the better, I thought there was no time limit for doing that. I never even dreamed that we could be too late. I, I had been making a huge mistake. I thought Satako could be hurt, but never that she would break. It was such a huge mistake. People, they break. Thinking that they don't is absolutely absurd. We needed to save Satako. We needed to save her before she broke. That fatal lapse in awareness had brought this on. Whose fault was it? That went without saying. Mine, no, ours. We all took on the duty of saving Satoko, but we were negligent to the point of laziness. In that sense, this was the inevitable result. 
Even if this didn't happen today and it happened tomorrow or the day after or next week, we would have just sat around doing nothing until that day. So this was... This was the obvious result. I slumped down to my knees, just as Mion and Rika-chan had done, and I too closed my eyes tight and I couldn't stop myself from sobbing. The teacher came and her face screwed up at the terrible spectacle before her. The instant she realized that the teacher was here, Satoko went through another complete change. She wiped her face with the curtains and, like nothing happened, smiled. Rena did not nod in reply, but then, since Satoko wished it, she nodded without strength. The rest of the class couldn't keep up with her extreme changes. We all just stared in a daze. <laughs> <laughs> Satoko would probably sweep the whole thing under the rug. For what? Her heart is torn to pieces, so what? What else? You wanted your Nini to help, didn't you? But unfortunately for you, Satoshi doesn't ever intend on coming back. It's never that easy. He won't just conveniently show up and save you. So, you don't have to wait for him anymore. You can cry, beg for help, and you can even run away. Mion suddenly said. She spoke then those few words that had tormented me countless times. Those words were a spell, and when I heard them, my whole body suddenly regained its calm. My emotions all slipped away like they had never been there, like a wave departing. And then, the world's color flipped inside out. My field of view expanded. Huh, interesting music. My head grew remarkably cold and I felt like my mind's volume had grown even wider than the classroom we were in. At the time, my soul was doubtlessly no longer in the small, petty vessel of my head, but floating in the air a little bit above it. It was a mysterious feeling of release. I broke free of the cramped confines of my skull and stretched out my roots in all directions as far as I wanted to. It was a strange feeling and one I had never felt before. An odd sense of exhilaration. My sharpened senses caused me to transcend. My mind was sharper than a knife's edge and I immediately decided that spending the time to let myself be crushed with grief would be an absolute waste. I erased all the garbage information from my brain. I expelled the pointless emotions presenting obstacles to action. If I could have taken back what had happened by crying about it, I would have cried all day. But the fact was, this was how things turned out. I couldn't take back what had happened. The top priority then would be to prevent the situation from worsening further and to sever the chains of misfortune. Until today, I had been looking at things so narrow-mindedly that I could scarcely believe it. To save Satoko, the only thing to do was to save Satoko. That's the only thing I thought about. I didn't allow myself to realize the most basic, direct, certain way of removing the source of Satoko's unhappiness. No, actually, I realized it yesterday. But as for the means, I had relied on some stupid curse from some dumb deity. I had never considered carrying the task out for myself. I would obliterate Satoko's uncle. There were plenty of ways to do it. This was a task that held infinite methods. Ironically, the method of saving Satoko required mostly money. But the method of killing that man pretty much took no money at all. I could kill him with the least amount of investment. The least amount of money suited him. It was only the weight of his life. I kept eliminating needless, worthless information from my head, replenishing it with only the knowledge I would need to achieve my goal. 
I used every cell in my brain to think about how I would kill him. The way I killed him did not matter. I would allow any method from whatever time and whatever country as long as it ended in a quick and certain death. If I were to have an additional condition, it would be not to get caught. Removing him was an act designed to return the peaceful times we had with Satoko. If I was arrested in exchange for the removal, then we might as well have killed each other. With only him gone, we would go back to our normal lives. That was my supreme objective. My ultimate goal. Kill him, definitely. But definitely don't leave any evidence either. Two alternatives at odds with one another. The condition of not leaving a trace back to me automatically narrowed the number of murder methods. No witnesses was an absolute must. Fortunately, given the right time in Hinamizawa, there would be nobody around. I mentally reconstructed the land around Satoko's house. The number of pedestrians different at different times. The movement algorithms of the neighbors. Would I lure him out or charge at him? What would my weapon be? When and where would I carry this out? Where? It needed to be somewhere I wouldn't leave a trace. When? It needed to be as soon as possible for Satoko's safety without wasting even a millisecond. This is absurd. Completely absurd. When I thought about it this way, it struck me how easy the act of killing was. If I could leave evidence, if I was just going to kill him, anyone could easily turn into a murderer. But our reason prevented that. It told us doing so would get us arrested for sure. In the end, being arrested by the police was the final thing preventing people from committing homicide. Absurd. If you went all the way out into the very middle of the ocean, you wouldn't leave any trace at all. Anyone would drop those they hated into depths if they knew that. It was all too easy to simply remove him. I could leave class right now, grab a metal baseball bat or something from the schoolyard, go to his house and attack him. Estimated time would be 25 minutes. If I wanted us to kill each other, it wouldn't even be minutes. I could do it in 1500 seconds. I knew just how much his continued existence depended on me. He was nothing. I could expel him from this world within just 1500 seconds after making up my mind. From when I decided what to do, he only had 1500 seconds. Actually, if I ran full speed into his house, that number would go down even further. But he was alive. He was still a part of this world at this very moment, having turned Satoko's body and mind to shreds. Why? Because I was letting him live. <laughs> you got the juice now, Keiichi. I was permitting him to live, so he was alive. If I rescinded that permission, he would be evacuating this mortal coil within 1500 seconds. You think I would let you breathe even 1500 more seconds of air? I'm taking that permission back right here right now. You better thank me for letting you live until today. However, I actually need more than 1500 seconds. I'm not just gonna end you, getting back to our old lives is far more important. It's only you I'll be cleanly cutting out of this world. That, they won't find a culprit. I'll just... I'll forget that I dirtied my hands on the likes of you as naturally as I brush my teeth before bed. So to do that, I'll make a special exception for you and give you more than 1500 seconds. I'll give you special permission to keep on living as you have until I can construct the perfect plan for your murder. Wait Keiichi, you can't let that time go to waste? Yeah I know, I'll kill him quickly. I'll remove him with certainty. I won't even waste much time to perfect that plan. Think back, tomorrow's Watanagashi, right? Last year on the night of Watanagashi, her aunt died. Her head was busted open by some deviant and her brain splattered everywhere. That's it. He's someone who deserves to be given death on the night of Watanagashi. Hey, Oyashiro-sama. You call yourself a guardian, but you didn't protect Satoko. Cursing Satoko's family for the damn stuff is your own business, but now you've made Satoko unhappy when she didn't have anything to do with it. I, Keiichi Maibara, hereby denounce you, the guardian deity of Hinamizawa, a failure. We don't need you. Go back to the deepest, darkest part of your shrine this year. Besides, if you had just cursed and killed both her aunt and her uncle last year, none of this would have happened. The curse this year, 
It's not on you. I'll be the one deciding. It won't be the three families controlling the serial deaths behind the scenes, nah! Not some vague people who I can't tell if they're the buffoons or not. This time, I'll be the one to deliver divine judgement. So don't get in my way, just watch. Stay quiet and watch. I'll obliterate him. I'll wipe him off the face of the earth. I will stomp out his very existence. Go away, disappear, vamoose on bitch, die. I'll tear your heart apart just like you did to Satoko. I'll have your blood as payment. Woo, boy! Rena, Mion, and Rika-chan were looking after me. Had I fallen to the floor? And who you call an asshole, by the way? My friends gave a start and backed away. Rena and the others, they exchanged glances, unsure of what to say, and stood confused for a few moments. Rena gulped firmly and opened her mouth. I have. What were these guys talking about? They've all been too scared of me lately. The fuck was Rena saying? Who else do I look like except Keichi Maibara? The look I gave her seemed to speak quite eloquently to those irritated thoughts. She understood and quickly apologized. Yeah, you fucking right. I got the juice now. June 18th, 1983. Abuse issues regarding Satoko Hojo, urgent. We propose that Satoko Hojo must be taken into immediate custody based on the items below. 1. Family situation. Life with adoptive father who recently returned to Hinamizawa has already turned disastrous, and she is currently subject to unendurable physical and mental abuse from the father. 2. Child consultation center's response. A child probation officer was dispatched yesterday on the 17th from the prefecture welfare office, but because of the 77 case, changed to continued coaching and cautionary action. Unfortunately, the consultation office head does not properly understand the situation. 3. Status of the concerned child. Child already appears to be suffering from an outbreak of something close to neurosis or manic depression. If her unstable pubescent mind is negatively stimulated by stress, it will put her development of a healthy body and mind at risk. This cannot be allowed to continue from a humane standpoint. 4. Allegations made to the family court. We propose, based on the above items, that Satoko Hoja should immediately be taken into protective custody. She should be secured temporarily under emergency allegations to the family court under Article 28. We request emergency coordination between all related agencies. Children with Special Needs, General D2-3, number 44, 1977, child name, Satoko Hojo, residence, Hinamizawa Village, Shishibone. 1. Consultation Circumstances, Telephone SOS from Child of Child Abuse. 2. Abuse Situation. Child claims she is being physically abused by her adaptive father. 3. Family Structure. Circle marks abusers. Circle. Adaptive father. Real mother, older brother, child in question. 
Note, adoptive father and real mother entered family registry in 19 who knows when. The child is the daughter of the mother's previous husband. 4. Child Consultation Center's response. On the day of the child's telephone consultation, the center called the child's school and asked of her situation. On that day, the child welfare officer on duty visited the child's house and conducted an interview. The adoptive father sincerely listened to instruction and agreed to take child raising workshops in the city from now on. As part of the suggested coaching, the center will continue to observe the situation. 5. Other notes. As a result of numerous counseling sessions at the city's education consultation office regarding the child, we learned that there was a high possibility the cause of the child's excessive distrust towards her adoptive father was the result of a lack of communication. The abuse she claimed hadn't actually taken place. She had made a false report to distance herself from her adoptive father. Below is a note written in pencil by the person on duty at the time. The problem appeared to be more with the daughter. Chief Investigator F of the city's education consultation office said most of her stories of abuse were likely fabricated. They decided to shift the focus of their coaching to the child. Be cautious not to take everything the child says as truth. And with that, we are going to call an episode. I'll see you guys next time, man. I don't know how you could enjoy an episode like this. Uh, I just want to get done with it. Listen, man. I I don't... I don't enjoy stories of child abuse, man. There is... I just want to get done with this arc. That's basically it. This fucked up. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. I'm out of here. Love y'all and deuces.